Today, CoolCam AK just released its in-camera RAW plus DNGA merge feature and Super HDR. It totally changed the game in professional virtual tour creation in terms of image quality and workflow optimization. Ricoh Data Z1 is not falling far behind though. It has a couple new updates including software updates with Adobe Lightroom and the famous dual fisheye plugin that allow nine bracketed HDR capture in a click of a button. And don't forget about Insta 61 r right here. Nice shot and HDR both got improved in the latest firmware update and software update. All these are very exciting news for virtual tour creators. But the question remains, which one is the best for virtual tour professional in mid and late 2020? Well, let's find out together. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up, the one-stop shop for anything to see VR and professional virtual tour. Let's focus on CoolCam AK first. Before today, you will need extra software called Kendall Raw Plus to merge your DNG8 to achieve the amazing image quality you see from this comparison video. Now you can merge DNG8 directly in camera after capture, let me show you. After you capture your DNG8, go to your gallery by slide the left edge, choose the DNG8 photo right here. You will see in the lower left corner, a new icon appears called RAW Plus. Tap that. We will start the in-camera stitching. When it is done, the stitched and merged photo will appear in your gallery with a new label of RAW Plus. The merging process does take about a minute the result is without any ghosting. They also introduced Express DNG8. Express DNG8 does not generate a DNG, but only one with almost the same quality as DNG8. The only catch is Express DNG8 will have ghosting if anything is moving in the scene. Here is regular DNG8 merged from the camera and here is the Express DNG8. As you see, they are pretty identical except me and the slider, which is in motion. The truly exciting update is Super HDR. In a nutshell, Super HDR is merging 24 DNG with three different exposure brackets. Look at the result here at the exact same setting. Super HDR has dramatically increased the dynamic range, color, details and reduce noise. The result really speak of itself. So how is that quality compared to Insta 361R Nightshot, a 9 DNG merging and the 1R HDR? How about the king of virtual tour, Ricoh Theta Z1? Let's quickly talk about Ricoh Theta Z1 though. The correct way and the professional way to use Z1 on virtual tour is to use the dual fisheye plugins. I will have another tutorial to explain my workflow on the dual fisheye plugin. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you are new here, I am a true professional aiming for the best image quality for your commercial clients. My work is featured on official Facebook 360 page multiple times has 360 photos with thousands of views, one ton of awards, front spot on YouTube VR, and recognized it by the biggest Instagram account. The best of all, I am not afraid and hide my skills behind a paywall. I share what I learned and want the best for you, so you can be more successful than me. We are going to test HDR ghosting and image quality at the same time. Let me explain the testing environment right now. So here is the shooting environment. As you see right there, my camera is on a slider going left and right continuously. So you can see the ghosting doing HDR effect. As I'm also gonna rate my hand like crazy. So you can see even more 
challenging to merging HDR uh, to not create ghosting on different mode. If you see outside, outside is blow out in a typical California sun. And if you look at the other side, it's in the shadow. There's a color chart right there for you to look at like uh, noise uh, in low light, dynamic color situation, how uh, different HDR, uh, different DNG gotta handle that. And you can also see the mixed lighting right here. I put a chart right here, put in like regular lighting on there. So we have a really complicated scenario with mixed lighting dynamic range lighting to see how is each camera gonna perform. Here is again RAW Plus, Express DNG8 and Super HDR from the Kenta Cam AK. Here is the install to see one R night shot. And here is the install to see one R HDR with nice step of EV bracketing. And here we have Rico Theta Z1 with two fisheye lens plugins. First, let's talk about image resolution. Coolcam AK is AK output. You can actually reach 8534 by 4267 with PT GUI. More on that later. 1R is 6K and Z1 is 7K. According to 1R review video, you know that already DNGA is still better than Nightshot in terms of dynamic range and image quality. In HDR, 1R is okay, a lot better than 1X but it is really washed out and the dynamic range is nowhere compared to Ricoh Theta Z1 and Coolcam AK, Super HDR. As you see in the shadow, it also very soft looking and not sharp at all. I think Install360 can do the same thing as Kendall Coolcam, do a bracketed merge of a night shot. But right now, this feature is not here yet. 1R HDR does has one advantage let's go thing in the final result okay let's compare z1 dual fish eye to cool camp super hdr they are both very good i honestly think it really comes down to personal taste at this point z1 has less chromatic aberration and a slightly better and natural looking color but cool camp ak is sharper and less digital noise one more really important thing is the time to take to capture the HDR photo. As you know, longer it takes, more ghosting for the moving subject. So ideally, we want the fastest camera we can get in HDR. Well, let's test that, shall we? So here we have the real-time Super HDR capture with the Kendall Cool Cam and we start countdown and you can hear the camera making noise. Uh, the reason why I gotta play it in real time is because I want, really want you to see the whole process in the mobile phone and the camera reaction. Uh, what is that related to the camera when it's doing capture? I think it's important to know. So I'll show you the uh, whole thing. And as you see, I'm getting really impatient over there, moving around. Um, so yeah, it, it, it takes a while for the Super HDR, so just be mindful about it. So it just download the footage into your phone while continue processing and capture the whole thing. So yeah, it, it doing that whole process is actually also like transfer photo from the camera to the phone. Okay, now we finish. It's 53 seconds. Now let's take a look at Rico Theta Z1. See how long it take. So good thing about dual fish eye plugin is it make a little sound when each photo is taken and it's about nine photos so we make nine beat sound and after that we will tell you like it's processing and then when it's done it should make you a different sound that showing you that it's done and finished. Uh, again, uh, it's gonna take a while. So now we're done in processing right now. And right there, we're done. So it's about 51 seconds. Now let's take a look at Instar 261R.
Okay, I think it's almost finished. There you go, 32 seconds. So now you see why Insta 261 r has less amount of ghosting. 20 seconds per photo differences is a big deal. If you are doing a large virtual tour in volume, you might consider using the Insta 261 r instead, just because it will save you lots of time, and time is money. Okay, now let's get technical. Let me show you the best post-production workflow for Super HDR that will help you to produce the best image quality. If you can master this, your image will be better than 99% of the virtual tour out there. Let's get started. After you imported all the photos into your computer, open it with Lightroom Classic. Again, I recommend any professional to do your photo editing with a computer, not Lightroom Mobile on your iPad, even you have a very powerful iPad. Go ahead and select the three bracketed Express DNG. They are EV-3, EV-0, and EV-2. Select them all and right click and choose Photo Merge HDR. I usually choose Auto Align and Auto Setting. For the degauss amount, use it if you have moving subject in your scene. Now go to the develop tab and do some basic color grading. All my sample has minimum color grading to keep it fair for comparison, but I always check remove chromatic aberration. Coolcam Super HDR also introduced super chromatic aberration. So you will have to remove them manually by putting the remove amount past the midpoint and increase the range like so. Pay attention to the lens edges to remove the blue and purple fringes as much as you can. We will have to remove it further using masking in Photoshop. Now go ahead and export the 16-bit tip file with no compression. Now we are ready to stitch. The standard workflow will be open the TIFF file in the Coolcam Studio 2.0, but Coolcam Studio does not handle 16-bit color space correctly. Well, in fact, the latest version does not work for me in TIFF format. If I render out a 16-bit PNG, you see the output is all purplish and the color is all off and Coolcam Studio cannot output 16-bit TIFF file, which is necessary for post-processing in Photoshop. If you look at the Coolcam Studio stitch result, it is actually off for this indoor shot. It is a complicated stitch and usually an indoor virtual tour requires a manual stitch. I consider you as a professional virtual tour creator and you should know already how to stitch fisheye files with GoPro Auto Panel Giga or PT GUI. Honestly, if anyone trying to teach you virtual tour production without teaching PT GUI and the manual stitching workflow, he or she is probably not a true professional, as any virtual tour professional has at least five years of experience and they will tell you the same. Open up PT GUI. I'm on the PT GUI 12 beta version. Click camera here and PD Green knows it is a cool cam AK. Load in my template right here. My template usually work really well for cool cam AK and I will provide it for you for free to download. Check the link in the description and drop me a thank you comment. If you see problems, use control points to fix it. Beta 12 is really good compared to version 11. There is not much I need to do. Go ahead and create the panel. The benefit of a professional stitcher like PD GUI is to export 16-bit non-compressed TIFF file for further editing in Photoshop or other photo editing software. One more thing to fix for Coolcam AK beside your tripod lag and chromatic aberration. If you see the Coolcam Studio output, the image is flipped. Look at the text right here. We are simply going to flip the image horizontally like so. Now you can follow this tutorial right here to do further photo editing for your virtual tour software or for Facebook 360. 
If you want a more detailed HDR workflow using Photomatic, which is the recommended way to merge HDR instead of using Lightroom, check out this tutorial right here. Thank you for watching. I would highly recommend to download all the sample photos in this video and see it for yourself. The next tutorial we will be focused on the best dual fisheye plugin workflow for Ricoh Theta Z1 with the latest Z1 Lightroom plugin and PT GUI Pro. And we will also see what is going on with the LED panel palette one. They have some pretty exciting updates that no other camera can do in the virtual tour industry. As always, your like, share, and comment will help me continue to make more professional virtual tour content for you for free with love. Virtual tour is like a gold rush right now, but don't be that guy or girl just want to profit instead of creating the best experience for your clients. Keep learning up your skill, tap me your work on Instagram and Facebook, and I will see you next time. When people think of Abu Dhabi, they often picture that. Giant, shiny skyscrapers coming out of the sand. However, it also has a very rich history going back over 250 years, and here we are at one of the oldest standing structures, Qasr al Hassan. Let's go take a look. We are now standing underneath the dome of Louvre Abu Dhabi. We've brought you here in VR to try to give you a glimpse into what this is like, you really have to be here to experience it. <laughs>